back to the depths with you. Hello friends and enemies. Welcome back to Weekly Allowance where we are looking at a Mezco today. And not just any Mezco, a new release from Mezco's Rumble Society. And it's ocean themed. And if there's one thing I'm a fan of, it's ocean themed fantasy nonsense. So we are looking at Captain Nemo and he came with all this stuff. Please disregard the reflection of my ring light because this packaging is made of metal. It is a lunchbox style packaging that reflects the light quite handily. So yeah, in addition to this lunchbox style packaging and everything that comes within, we also have a little uh, pamphlet, I guess, about Captain Nemo and all his accoutrements and such. So yeah, a lot of neat, interesting stuff in here and we will go over this more later. He also comes with this, which I believe is a model of the Nautilus, so that'll be interesting to open up, but first we are going to look at the figure itself. Okay, so this is a little bit unique in that it is a lunchbox style package, and I haven't reviewed one of these before. Really cool illustration on the front of Captain Nemo battling a Kraken, probably. Did you know that originally the Kraken wasn't considered a giant squid? It was more like a, uh, a monstrous seal. It's true. If there's one thing I know about, it's sea monsters. I don't know much, but I do know about sea monsters. And it helps absolutely no one. Cool illustration on the lid. Both sides feature this Nautilus illustration. And on the back, that same illustration, but with uh, extra text. So you've got Mezco's info. Warning, choking hazard, small parts, not for children under three years. If you are a child under three years and you play with this toy, you will be tossed overboard. Let's go ahead and open them up. Right on top of everything, we get this kind of uh, small instruction manual type dealie. Uh, I assume this is for people like me who never know what they're doing and risk breaking the toy <laughs> by, uh, by doing something stupid. So this makes everything pretty much foolproof, I hope. So I'm sure I will be referencing this <laughs> throughout. I don't think I'm a stupid person, but I am very impatient and I am very forgetful. Uh, and those two things, not a good combo. Lunch tin packaging is so cool though. It's kind of something I don't even want to like put away with my other boxes. I just want to keep this out somewhere. I guess I could put my lunch in it, but I don't really go anywhere. So that would be a little pointless. Okay, he comes with so much stuff. I'm just gonna go ahead and undo it all. I'm not gonna lie, it's always a little bit daunting uh, reviewing Mezcos just because they come with so much stuff and they're just overflowing with detail. So it's usually a lot of stuff to cover. And this guy <laughs> is no different. Not only does he come with a billion things, the detail on him is just stunning. It sounds like an insincere word to use, but I'm saying it very sincerely. Just a crazy amount of detail on this guy. Like even the soft goods have a nuts amount of detail. You've got these puffed sleeves on his shirt, this kind of undersuit that's made of like a um, imitation leather material, offset stitching. I love the color scheme here, but as we all know, I am a fan of the color blue. So 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea is a concept that lends itself well to lots of uh, steampunk versions. I guess you could argue that the original was already steampunk. So Captain Nemo looks appropriately steampunky, but not too steampunky, you know? He's within the realm of believability. There's just some little details here and there that really um, enhance that aesthetic. Like his boots, again, with the great boots on all these figures. There are brass details on the soles, uh, the heel, and the toe. That way, if he drops something heavy, his toesies are protected. Really cool little rivet right there. Love the detail of the cutout. There's not much more steampunk than a brass-toed boot. <laughs> All these figures have such nice boots. If only I were tiny, I could wear them. Fantastic head sculpt, of course, we expect that from Mezco. Grizzled old sea captain. Really tiny lines and wrinkles. Delicately sculpted hair, including the beard and these tiny little beads in the beard. He's even got a little earring in one of his ears. And just luscious hair. He's got some uh, Geralt of Rivia hair going on. Just thinking about the logistics that go into producing something like this, like this bandana alone takes a lot of thought and a lot of work. It's just kind of crazy to think about. He's got a gorgeous shell-like vest. It looks to be made of some sort of marine animal leather, some sort, maybe stingray, shark. There are many benefits to being a marine biologist. Tons of nautical themed details. Cool squid cuff on the arm. Once again, 
Why don't I have a squid cuff? Nice gold accented shell decorations on the belt. And since he lost his hand in the shark attack of 1869, he's got a mechanical hand. Because if you've got the technology for a steampunk mechanical hand and you're missing your natural hand, why wouldn't you make a mechanical hand? And underneath we can even kind of see where it straps in. He's got this cool pouch on his uh, thigh and that will come into play later because there's some stuff that we can attach to that. So yeah, overall he's a cool looking dude. I would not want to cross him if I were a shark or a sea creature or a human being which I am. So by now we are very familiar with Mezcos and their articulation, uh, what is usually doable with them and what is not. We'll go over Nemo real quick. The head is going to be an issue for any poses because he's not only rocking the long hair in the back, he's rocking the long beard in the front. So up and down, at least with this head and probably with the other head, is very limited. Some good tilt though, but if you want to turn it any particular way, uh, if you get far enough, his head will just pop off. And that's once again because of this hair in the front and the back. So not much going on uh, there, and it's especially compounded by this thick vest right here. But let's look at the arms. Up. You got a swivel in there, I think, but the sleeves uh, are really going to be a problem when you're working with that. So neither of the arms can go up very far at the elbow, and that is because of the squid cuff and the metal hand, respectively. We do have up and down a little bit and rotation on this gloved hand and a much higher range of motion on this um, metal hand. It seems to be on a ball joint, so it has a lot more range of movement. Crunch back. Not too bad for an old timer. Forward, uh, pretty bad even for an old timer. Twist at the waist, but his leather bodysuit is definitely getting in the way of that. It is getting in the way of leg movement too. <laughs> That's a very stiff material and it does not want to move. You can go about that far with the knee before you really start stressing the material. You can see here I'm already tearing the stitches a little bit, so be careful about that. And some up and down and rotation on the ankle. Articulation wise, he's not really a heavy hitter but he looks super cool. I'm sure we'll be able to still get him into a bunch of fun poses. It's just when you're involving so many details and these stiff fabrics, no matter how puffy the sleeves may be, they are going to get in the way of movement. So as I touched on before, he comes with a lot of stuff, so we are going to go through that right now. And in a throwback to our Doc Nocturnal video, I'm going to do the old-timey announcer voice because it's been a while and I can. Old-timey announcers belong in steampunk, right? Introducing the accessories and accoutrements of Captain Nemo and his Nautilus crew, featuring the captain's own skeletal hand and the shark jaw that took it from him. One extra head, grizzled, cutlass and scabbard, forged by Nemo himself from metals found at the ruins of the sunken city of Atlantis. The Ahab appendage, a retractable harpoon that attaches to Nemo's left arm. The Leighton Sparklock handgun, a handheld version of the Leighton Thunderbolt rifle. This firearm projects lethal rounds of electricity. One ivory dagger in chief, made of narwhal, probably. One telescope and holster, the amusingly named sextant, so many hands, and of course what is a captain without a captain's cloak and a captain's cap. So let's go through our accessories one by one. <laughs> this is just really amusing to me. When I opened up the package I had forgotten that he came with this, so it's a memorial to his hand and uh, I guess the shark that he uh, <laughs> grabbed the hand out of. You can even see the backup teeth and the shark jaws, and the back even has the rivets and stuff that are holding the jaws together. It's hilarious, honestly. <laughs> like. It'd be fun to display this just with no context. It would also be fun just to have a life-size version of this. I'm sure someone does somewhere. We've got an alternate Captain Nemo head. It's a little more windswept. His beard and his hair are flowing in the wind. His teeth are gritted. He's angry. Probably watching a sea monster attack his vessel. You've got his cutlass and scabbard, so I guess I'm correct in thinking that he fashioned this from some kind of sea monster and then put its eyeballs into the hilt, well, you know, like you do. It kind of reminds me of that Kingdom Hearts keyblade with the eyeball in it, always watching. It'd be cool if this cutlass, like, talked to him, you know, like telepathically. It's watching everything he's doing and talking to him. It doesn't have much good to say because he killed it, but it's company at least. I mean, he has company already. He has a crew, a crew of seamen. There, I said it. The harpoon arm is really intriguing, mainly because it's got a real rope that is deployable and retractable. So to deploy the rope, you twist it counterclockwise. I'm sure there's a better way to do this that I'm not thinking of. The harpoon comes out. To retract it, just wheel it back in clockwise. And that is a really, really cool feature. And of course the details on everything are uh, fantastic. For instance, on the top side of this harpoon arm, 
you've got a little octopus, just a little metal octopus hanging out. You've got some scribing there. So many cool, intricate details on pretty much everything in this set. Here is a tiny, tiny sextant. What's cool about this is that there's even an approximation of lenses included. It's really hard to tell, but there's some inset plastic that looks like a lens. Here's this sweet looking dagger that looks exactly like it was carved out of um, ivory, maybe narwhal horn ivory or some sort of sea monster ivory. Not much paint on it, but that lends to the illusion of it being ivory. Super cool handgun, keeping in that same color scheme of uh, brass and browns, and it's got a matching holster. He's got a telescope and a holster for the telescope, and the telescope is also really cool because it actually telescopes. It also has the approximation of lenses, just inset plastic, where there would be lenses. The detail on this thing is, um, pretty crazy. There's tiny, tiny symbols running along the circumference right here. That in conjunction with these scribe details, I mean, you really kind of have to get super close and personal to see those. It's also neat that it comes with a holster. Probably meant to go that way, but who knows. A ton of hands, a literal ton of hands. So you've got three different uh, mechanical hands, a relaxed mechanical hand, a pointing mechanical hand, a reaching for something mechanical hand, perhaps, and several non-mechanical hands. This looks like it could be a trigger finger hand, probably. Relaxed, splayed out. Out. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Is he like putting it in his pocket or something? I don't know. And two different uh, grasping hands for your grasping needs. He comes with this really nice cloak. It's monogrammed. This guy's living the life. Like apparently he used to be a prince, so I guess he would have access to funds to buy nice cloaks and boots and such. And a jaunty hat. So of course it's a Mezco, so it has a stand, and this time we've got the uh, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea title against a really soothing sea foam green background. So the deal with the stands is the same here as it is across all Mezcos. You've got a peg in which his foot can be planted, or you can punch this out, put this in instead, and hold him up that way. So this pouch at his thigh holster can be removed if you have stronger fingers than I do. Okay, there we go. We did it, guys. And you can replace that with the telescope, the dagger, or the pistol. So let's do the telescope, because I'm interested to see how that works out. You just plug this in, in theory. Not a perfect fit, but I will take it. But then if you wanted to give him his dagger instead, it's got these two little holes. And that would be, <laughs> that looks really cool, actually. It looks like he's um about to go diving and he's taking his dagger with him to collect mollusks or something. I don't know. And, of course, we've got the more traditional handgun holster, which also looks cool. And, of course, we cannot forget about the harpoon arm. <laughs> Take off his hand and then slide this into place. Okay, that looks uh, crazy awesome. <laughs> he's ready to... Uh, hunt something. I don't know if it's gonna be a whale or what, but he is ready. So in addition to the holster on his side, which I'm just going to put his uh, little pouch back on, he's also got two attachment points at the back of his belt that can house the scabbard for his sword and his dagger, respectively. So if you want to have him just insanely ducked out, you can do that with the harpoon arm, the sea monster sword, and the ivory dagger. <laughs> he's just out for blood. So let's look at his um, more angry head. I feel like this guy is always angry. Probably. Oh yeah. Yeah, he means business. So intimidating. Like, you might make fun of him because of his seashell belt buckle, but then he'll just shoot you in the face. That was the sound of me almost falling down. So when you're replacing his uh, flesh and blood hand, remember that his bracelet will come off. So you want to watch out for that and not lose it. Stick it back onto the nub. Easier said than done. Probably easier when you're not trying to keep it on camera. <laughs> but when has that ever been my concern, am I right? You know, I try my best. It's just not very good. There we go. Back to the depths with you. Listen, I'm just having fun. So we've got one more thing to try out on him, and that is his cloak and his hat. Is that two more things? That counts as two more things. I can't do math. So the cloak, on the inside there's these strap dealies that you can put his arms through, and that will secure the cloak. Uh, in place better. So that's a really nice touch. That way there's not as much danger, or no danger perhaps, of it falling off. Now it is a little difficult to get it on him just because um, of this clasp, 
But once it's on, it's on. His hair also naturally wants to be inside the cloak instead of over it. And so uh, I just let that happen. It looks a little bulky on him, but you know, it's a heavy cloak. And he's got a tiny hat. I don't see how this hat um, is going to do him any favors. It doesn't even cover his ears. The cap also takes a little bit of doing. It's a little bit too small for his head. And also the bandana doesn't come off. So you kind of need to um, work that into place over the knot in the bandana. Yeah, the cloak is cool, but he looks so much cooler. when everything is displayed. So you could probably pose the cloak in such a way where most of his normal outfit is uh, on full view. <laughs> this has been a long journey and it's not over. He will come with this Nautilus model since uh, the full thing would have been way too big to produce. So a model is as good as we're gonna get. Very well packaged. This is up here with the, um, the shark jaw has a really cool, just separate piece. I love the tentacles coming up from the side. And then right here, you've got 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The tentacles continue along the top of this plaque. Very, very nice. It's heavy. I don't know what it's cast in. I guess it's just cast in a heavy resin. It's heavy, it's nice, shiny, metallic. Very, very cool piece. So I just wanted to briefly touch on this, um, included data journal just because it's got some really cool stuff in there. You've got an explanation of the arms and stuff. You've got a kind of a mini biography of Captain Nemo himself, the Nautilus layout, some cool stuff like the dive suit and the wave rider. I know the wave rider is a real physical thing. I'm wondering if the dive suit is going to be a physical thing too. His crew, which is also a set that Mezco is releasing, and some um, really nice illustration of Nemo and the crew in action. I think this is my favorite of him battling some kind of mutant mosasaur. Yeah, I really like things like this that are included. Just like kind of little fun manuals with really nice artwork. And it just so happens that I have a giant squid for him to fight. <laughs> it's not quite as large as um, the ones he's used to fighting are probably, but it's still pretty good size in comparison to him. The only problem is I don't want the giant squid to lose. I'm on team giant squid always. So here's how Nemo stacks up against another member of the Rumble Society, Hawk P40. Hawk P40 is a large guy. Uh, he compares pretty well to Nemo. I mean, I'd expect a cyborg plane man to be a little larger than a salty sea captain. And so here he is with Doc Nocturnal, who, as we have discussed before, is a more slender, light figure. He's shorter, he's smaller, so I think Captain Nemo is on the more uh, average guy side of things, whereas Doc Nocturnal is just a smaller character. I would like to see these two in a fight. Seems like they wouldn't, uh, get along. You know what you did. Yeah, so, uh, Captain Nemo, a great figure. I mean, <laughs> I feel like I say this every time we talk about Mezcos, but they're just always beautifully made. The Rumble Society stuff is really imaginative, and I'm really enjoying it. So, if you're a fan of Mezcos and the Rumble Society characters and Salty Sea Dogs and perhaps ocean-themed steampunk adventures, then Captain Nemo is the man for you. Thank you for watching the video. Likes and subscribes are very much appreciated. Comments are more than welcome, and I will see you guys. Mm -hmm.